Well, be off with you, said Rosie. If you've been looking after Mr. Frodo all this while, what do you want to leave him for, as soon as things look dangerous? This was too much for Sam. It needed a week's answer or none. He turned away and mounted his pony, but as he started off, Rosie ran down the steps. I think you look fine, Sam, she said. Go on now, but take care of yourself, and come straight back as soon as you have settled the ruffians. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Happy Valentine's Day for tomorrow as well. In the spirit of the holiday, I like to make videos on some of the different and amazing love stories in Middle-earth. I've done ones on Amroth and Nimrodel, Eowyn and Faramir, and Aragorn and Arwen, if you'd like to check those out from past years as well. And today we'll be looking at the simple and small love story between two hobbits, Sam Gamgee and Rosie Cotton. For more related information, please check out the articles and videos in the description and cards, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me. Let's begin our tale. Born just four years after Sam, in 2984 of the Third Age, Rose, or Rosie Cotton, was one of five children, and she had four brothers, Young Tom, Jolly, Nick, and Nibs. They lived south of Bywater, on a farm on the South Lane. Now, the Cottons were not too far from Hobbiton, and the Gamgees, who lived in Bagshot Row. And so the two families became friends, and Sam grew up with the Cotton children, swimming with them in the Bywater Pool. Now Sam, along with many other hobbits, had misgivings about swimming and boats, but it is notable that to be around Rosie and her brothers, he would do so. And so Sam and Rosie would grow up together and would be close, but it would not be until after the Quest of the Ring from 3018 through 3019 of the Third Age that this really came forth. When Frodo moved to Crick Hollow in Buckland, Sam went with him, and obviously they used this as a ploy to do the Quest of the Ring. And while many others did not expect Sam or Frodo to return, Rosie did, and expected Sam back in the spring of 3019, but instead Sam came back in the autumn of that year, during the scouring of the Shire. Now, I would be curious to know the extent of their love story before the quest, as Rosie and their relationship at large is not mentioned much, if at all, until the late part of the Return of the King. I believe they had made plans or promises to each other that were changed due to the quest, as later it seems that they had plans to get married before they were interrupted. I'm also curious to know the extent of how Sam and Rosie thought of each other during the events of The Lord of the Rings. Surely their love for each other was a beacon of light and hope they could both hold on to, as Sam aided Frodo in destroying the ring and bringing about the downfall of the Dark Lord, and Rosie was forced to watch her beloved Shire fall under the sway of Saruman and his lackeys. Really, the only enumerated moment that we have in the text of Sam thinking about Rosie is while he journeyed through Mordor, and when he thought of Rosie, but also other hobbits, and the good memories he had concerning them. Regardless, during the scouring of the Shire on November 2nd, Sam made it a point to go to the Cotton Farm to check in on the family, and Rosie in particular. During their interaction here, Rosie asks where Sam has been, and tells him that if he's been looking after Frodo all this time, he should not leave him when things get dangerous. Sam did not have enough time to explain where he had been, but was happy to see the Cottons were doing well. He then goes to leave, and Rosie tells him he looks well, and to take care of himself, and to return as soon as he can. It's clear in this interaction that hers is just the personality to fit Sam, as she speaks to him as Sam has spoken to himself throughout the whole adventure, a lot like how Gaffer spoke to Sam as well. Sam then went and aided in rallying the hobbits, and that night and the next morning the Cottons tended to Frodo, Sam, and others as the hobbits prepared to oust Saruman from the Shire once and for all. Later on, Frodo would speak of the renown of Sam's deeds during the quest, which would greatly impress Rosie and would make Sam blush. Thus, it is no surprise that after the end of the scouring of the Shire, and after Frodo and Sam lived with the Cottons while their own homes were being restored, Sam and Rosie would then want to get married. However, Sam, who went on to live with Frodo at Bag End, felt torn in two, as he wished to marry Rosie and yet remain by Frodo's side in Bag End. He spoke to how Rosie was quite upset at Sam's going away on the quest with Frodo, but now that the job was done, they did wish to be married. Frodo would later claim that Sam would need to be whole for many years, and there was still much for him to do and to be. So indeed, he would invite Rosie to live with him and Sam in Bag End once they were married, so Sam could be whole. And so Sam Gamgee, a hero of the West, would marry his longtime friend and love, Rosie Cotton, on May 1st, 3020. His family would take the surname Gardner, as Sam had replanted much of the Shire. 
The first of their many children, Eleanor, would be born on March 25th, 3021, the two-year anniversary of the fall of Sauron, and many children would follow throughout the years. In total, Sam and Rosie would have 13 kids, many named after their renowned friends, and others after flowers and such. But Frodo would leave this Middle-earth at the end of the Third Age. And for Rosie, his children, and his deeds yet to do, Sam would stay for a while, inheriting Bag End from Frodo for his great family. Indeed, there was still much more for Sam to do, as he would become the longtime mayor of the Shire, and Rosie would be known as Mistress Rose in the Shire. These two would be great friends with the King of Arnor Aragorn and his wife Queen Arwen, as Sam would be given the Star of the Dúnedain, a silver brooch, and their daughter Eleanor would be made a maid of honor to Queen Arwen. In time, Sam and Rosie would go abroad together to stay with the king and queen in their other kingdom of Gondor, and they would spend a year there. They would live happy lives together, Sam and Rosie, but eventually Rosie would pass away in 61 of the Fourth Age. And on September 22nd of that year, Frodo and Bilbo's birthday, Sam would leave Bag End, going to the Tower Hills and entrusting the Red Book to his daughter Eleanor, who lived there, and the last ring bearer, Sam Gamgee would sail from the Grey Havens into the West to reunite with Frodo and Valinor and bear the love of his wife Rosie for the rest of his life in the Undying Lands. Throughout Sam's life, he overcame his fear of water for both Rosie and Frodo, the two people he loved most. In many ways, the love story of Sam and Rosie is very important in the story of The Lord of the Rings, as it provides a common and realistic parallel to the more epic and fate-filled love story of Aragorn and Arwen. The Lord of the Rings also ends with Sam returning home to Rosie and Eleanor and Bag End, as he says, I'm back. In my mind, that marks this relationship as thematically important, for even though Frodo found no peace or marriage in Middle-earth, and neither did Bilbo, and they both needed to go forth to Valinor to find peace, Sam found simple and joyous happiness in love. The story ends where it began, in the Shire at a time of peace, with Hobbit characters who could enjoy such things. And so, we come to the end of our tale of Sam Gamgee and Rosie Cobb. From this tale, we see that some of the best things in life can be found simply in love. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed my telling of this love story. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on the love story of Sam and Rosie? Let me know in the comments below. I actually think that this short and simple love story can tell us much about some of the things Tolkien valued most in his own story, as it is quite fascinating and incredible that he ended the epic of the Lord of the Rings with Sam returning home to his wife and daughter, a simple end to a complex and large story. Thanks to our Valar tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Kyle Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scouten, Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Condar, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Kuzan, Brandon Glidden, Molly Sullivan, and Daniel Burns. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons and YouTube members. It really means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with an epic character history on Thingol, King of Doriath. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.